Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about our mason jar light fixtures we created for our bedroom in the RV. Now the thing that's awesome about this project is that it's super easy and at the same time you can make it for your sticks and bricks home or your RV. Now when we made ours it was kind of a, a iffy process in the sense that Katie actually used a lot of leftover parts from our other custom RV light fixtures in order to create these lights in the bedroom. Now what was difficult about that is that it made it hard to create a post or a video that would show you guys how easy this process is. Well, we've planned for a while to add dimmers and make a couple updates to them uh, so that we could show you how easy it is. And now we have everything together, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you how to create these mason jar lights. Now, a quick tip I want to give you just in case you are creating this for your RV, and that's that you can use any light fixture you want in your RV as long as you make sure the bulb matches the power supply. So in our case, we have 12 volt power going to be uh, running to these lights, so we're going to use 12 volt light bulbs. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, we did put together a video, which you can check out here, and we also have a post over on the website. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the materials you're going to need in order to create these lights. A crossbar kit. Now there's a ton of different kinds out there, so pick the best one for your situation. Or if you want, you can buy the pieces individually. A 5 inch canopy. Now we got ours in antique brass, uh, but you can choose whichever finish you like. A keyless socket with shade ring. A half inch female coupling a 1 inch steel hollow nipple, 2 inch male threaded bent arm, some lighting wire, an antique mason jar with a one piece lid, a light bulb. Now we're using the 12 volt G45 LED because it's small enough to fit in a mason jar. A dimmer switch. This is optional, but if you're going to use one, make sure that the dimmer switch you get matches your power supply. This one's for a 12 volt. A grounding wire. Now our RV doesn't have ground wire supplied where we're going to be installing our lights, but if you do see a ground wire in your home or RV, we definitely recommend using it. Wire nuts, electrical tape, a screwdriver, a pair of wire cutters, a nail and a hammer. Now we use this to create the hole in our mason jar lid, but if you'd like, you could use a drill and a hole bit. Drill and drill bits. Now, this is optional, but we're going to be using it to create the hole in our canopy for our dimmer switch. Some clamps, but you're only going to need these if you're going to be drilling a hole and installing the dimmer switch. A voltage tester. Now, this is optional as well, but I found that it's really helpful to just let me know and ensure me that the power's off so that I know that I won't get shocked and I won't blow any fuses. With the materials list being in the video, it may be a little bit confusing or a little overwhelming, um, but make sure to check out our post. We'll have a complete list of all the materials we used, as well as links that'll take you to where you can get those materials. That way, if you're looking to make the exact same mason jar light fixture we've created, you'll be able to do so. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is wire our socket, and uh, here is our keyless socket when it's all put together, and here it is all taken apart. So the first thing we'll start with is our socket, which you can see right here, and you have a brass screw and you have a silver screw. Now you're going to want to connect your hot wire to the brass screw and your neutral wire to the silver screw. Um, that's going to make sure that you get good power, but also it's going to help eliminate the possibility of you actually shocking yourself. Um, so anyway, we have that and then we have our wire and uh, as you can see here, I have a little knot tied um, through a lot of my research. I've read that if you tie this knot, it takes a lot of the tension off of the wires that you attach to the screws. So it helps to eliminate the possibility of the wires coming undone from the screws in your socket. Um, also, an interesting thing to note here is both of our wires are black, however, one is hot and one is neutral. And the best way to figure that out is that the one that's ridged that you can feel the ridges on uh, is actually going to be your neutral. And the one that's nice and smooth with no ridges is going to be your hot. So in our case, our hot is copper and our neutral is uh, silver. But anyway, let's go ahead and attach these. Thank you. 
And from what I've read here, it's important, see how I have the hook and the wire there, and I loop that over the inside of the screw. Now, it's important here that I have it looped to the right. That way, when I screw in uh, the screw with the wire underneath, it's actually going to pull the wire into position and hold it a little bit more secure in order to make sure that our connection's made properly. And uh, speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little better here. There we go. So now our wires are connected to our socket. So we're gonna go ahead and run it through this bottom piece. Now, on our actual socket here, you can see two separate pieces. There's a little black kind of indent there, um, and then there's one here as well. So um, on our bottom piece, you can see there's two little bars. So what you wanna do is actually put, pull those into position so that it rides right on the right one, which one of them is gonna be a little bit uh, easier for it to ride into. which just to give you a little heads up, this insulator can be a real pain. But now that that's in position, we'll take this piece. And as you can see in the insulation, there's two open grooves. That's for this black piece and this other black piece. So in order to make sure you're lined it up right, you can take your socket and your bottom piece and slide it into position. Now that it's in position, we'll go ahead and take our um, bottom screw piece and then that will go ahead and tighten everything up so as you can see there now the socket on the inside is wired and we have the wires come out of the bottom with the caps put back into place so now while we're here we're going to go ahead and install the bottom washer we'll slide it all the way down and now we're going to actually take our mason jar lid uh, which we'll get into a little bit more about this here in a second but you slide that right into position and there that is so now that's complete now the thing is, is the mason jar and the light bulb, they're gonna come a little bit later on. Uh, but before we go any further, let's go ahead and touch on the mason jar lid and how we created the hole. All right, so real quick on the mason jar lid. Now this is actually the same lid we used in our old mason jar lights, which is gonna work just fine for this. Um, and how we did it is we went ahead and we took our socket, uh, in this case, the old socket, but it works for this, and we put it on top of the lid, creating an outline of how big we needed it. Then once we had our outline, we went ahead and used a nail and a hammer, and we created basically a template around the outside, uh, creating the holes, and then the interior ended up falling out. Now again, if you want, you can use a drill with a hole bit or something along those lines. That might be a little better. Or you can also file down the inside because it does get a little sharp. Now, once you actually install this into the light fixture with the two different washers on both sides, it actually covers all of the area, uh, eliminating the ability to see um, that it's kind of rough, but then also eliminating the, uh, the opportunity that you would actually cut yourself or anything like that on the sharp edges. So this worked for us, but if you have something that can make it a little smoother, like maybe filing it down or anything like that, that may be a good idea also. But anyway, let's go ahead and move forward with uh, the rest of the light fixture. All right, so at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and install our dimmer switch. Now, this is an optional step. Um, you may have a switch already built in on your socket and you don't need a dimmer, or you may be working on a light fixture that's gonna go uh, to a power source that has a switch built into the wall. 
but for us that's not the case so here we have our canopy and as i go around here you can see there's no hole in the sidewall so we're going to need to create one so that we can then install the dimmer switch and in order to do that we're going to need our drill our drill bits our clamps our canopy and our dimmer so the first step is to find out what size hole we need to create in order to install the dimmer switch. So I'm going to remove the knob and the washer that will hold it in place. And here you can see how thick it is. So my general rule of thumb when I'm looking to create a hole to fit something is I'll take my drill bit and I'll place it in its widest possible situation and put it underneath where I'm going to need the hole. And if I'm able to see a little bit of the bit on both sides of the item I'm looking to create the hole for, then I know it'll work. So this is a 5 16th and that's what we're going to be using. Now, this is quite a big bit, especially to be drilling into this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a 3 16th bit and we're going to drill our hole into the side as a pilot and then come in with our bigger bit to finish the hole up. Now, to be completely honest with you, um, this is the second time I've drilled a hole, and that's because in our last one, I actually made an executive decision, which was a bad idea, and I decided to put the dimmer switch on the bottom. Now, the problem with that is that when we installed it on the wall, it uh, was kind of an eyesore and it just didn't look right. So what we're actually going to do is take it and install the switch on the right hand side so that when we place it on the wall, the switch will be hidden in the back and still easily accessible. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this clamp down and we'll drill our hole. All right, so what I'm doing here is trying to line my drill bit up straight with the three holes. That way I'll know that it's on the right hand side where I want it. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and do this. All right, and that about wraps it up for creating the hole. Now let's see if it fits. Like a glove. Now let's move on to assembling the light fixture. So over here we have our socket wired and ready to go and we do already have the mason jar lid attached. And then we have our bent arm, we have our threaded female coupling, we have our threaded nipple, and then we also have our star washer, our washer, our nut, and then our canopy with the dimmer switch already installed, our wire cutters, and a screwdriver. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is take our wired socket and then we're going to take our um, bent arm connection and slide the wire through. Now one thing here that Katie and I learned very soon on is that a lot of times when you're building light fixtures, if you tighten everything real tight, it's very difficult to get loose and you may have to use like a pair of pliers or something. Now the problem with that if you're trying to get it loose with pliers is that you may create some damage on your finish. So what we do is when we're assembling the light fixture, we'll go ahead and put everything in place but not completely tighten it down. That way if we make a mistake or want to make some changes, we can come back and easily loosen things up. But for right now, we'll go ahead and screw this in gently, not too tight. All right, that's about good. Now we're going to take our threaded female coupling, we'll attach that to our bent arm, again not too tight. Now we will take our threaded nipple, slide the wire through, attach it to our female threaded coupling, alright look at that starting to come together right? So now we will take our canopy and slide the wire and the threaded nipple through. Now that that's through, we're gonna to wanna to take the star washer, slide it down over the wire and over the threaded nipple, then the normal washer, 
same path, and then the nut. And then as you tighten this nut, it'll tighten it on the front, creating that seamless look. Seamless look. So now it's important at this stage to kind of line this up where you're going to want it. So since we're going to be putting it up on the wall like this, we want our knob to the right. So we'll line that up into position. And now everything looks pretty good, pretty in position. So we'll go ahead and tighten it up the best we can. So everything seems to be pretty tight there. So now we're going to go ahead and actually grab an item that we didn't have included here. And that is a pair of pliers. Then you can tighten it up with a pair of pliers on the back. Now there is one other thing we wanted to mention and that's here on the front. Um, you can see that right here on the side there's actually a little screw. And you can tighten this down and then that will make sure that your threading stays in place. But other than that, now we're going to go ahead and uh, flip it over and show you the back. As you can see here, I do have quite a bit of extra wire, um, and that's going to be a little bit too much. So at this stage, we'll go ahead and we're going to cut that off, and we'll go ahead and also uh, strip the wires. Also, you might be able to see that little cut on my finger. Yeah, that's going to happen once in a while. <laughs> Did you just do that? Yeah. Do you need to go put a Band-Aid on? And there we are. So our light fixture is ready to go back to the room, get wired up, and then we'll move forward. So to make this a little bit easier, we're going to go ahead and wire the uh, bulb wires into the dimmer wire. So when we get to the back, we can just go ahead and connect up. So with this specific dimmer that we got, it says in the directions that we want to connect the white wire to our hot wire from our bulb. So in this instance, remember we put copper to the brass screw, so this is going to be our hot wire. So we're going to go ahead and twist these around one another. And then you take your red wire to the neutral coming from the bulb and twist those together. Now, once we get back to the room, it should be as simple as, as attaching the white and hot from our bulb to the hot line coming from the wall. And then we attach this black line to the neutral coming from the wall. All right, let's go get this installed. All right, here we are, we're finally back in the room. We have our light fixture all put together. We have the dimmer wired in with our bulb wires. Uh, and then over here, you can see that we have our wires coming out of the wall. Now our power is turned off and that's really key because one, you don't want to shock yourself and two, you don't want to blow a fuse because that can be a pain. Now, before we turn the power off, I did have these wires covered in electrical tape um, so that we could still use everything in the, house or in the RV without worrying about uh, these wires. But now the power's off, that's gone. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach our light fixture and then we're gonna give it a try, turn the power on, make sure it works. If it does work, I'll go ahead and use my wire nuts over here to secure everything with my electrical tape and then we'll get the uh, light fixture mounted on the wall. But let's go ahead and hook this up, which remember when we said before, the white goes to the hot of the light bulb and then also to the hot coming out of the wall. So that's what we're gonna hook up first. I'm gonna move this light bulb.
Now it's important when you're wiring up um, your dimmer switch and your light bulb wire and all of that, that you really wrap it around good um, so that the wire from the wall is touching the wire from the dimmer switch and the wire that comes from the light bulb. Because if for some reason you accidentally wire the wire from the wall uh, to this, but you the wire doesn't touch the dimmer switch wire, then your light's just going to turn on whenever the power's on. So just try to make sure they're all touching each other. Now over here, this was our neutral, and it's going to go to our neutral wire coming from the wall. All right, so now our neutral is connected to our neutral. I'm gonna put the light bulb in place, screw it down. And now I'm gonna go turn on the power and we're gonna see if this works. Yay, we have a dimmer, that's awesome. Okay, so now that we know that everything's hooked up right and we're ready to go, Katie's going to go ahead and turn off the power again, and then we'll go ahead and secure our wires and install it on the wall. All right, so uh, we have it working. We know that it works. I'm going to go ahead and take my wire nuts, secure them, and then use some electrical tape to make sure that it doesn't wiggle around, uh, and then we'll go ahead and install the light fixture on the wall. And just as a little vote of confidence, sometimes when you're attaching these wires, it can be extremely difficult and you can run into some problems where they kind of pull apart and things like that. Um, the only trick I can give as a suggestion there is just try not to get too frustrated and just keep pushing forward. Right, and now all of those are some completely secure. So I'm gonna grab the mason jar and then we'll go ahead and mount it to the wall. Oh yeah, I got my mason jar. All right, so that looks pretty good with that all installed right there. So we're gonna go ahead and toss the power on and then we'll wrap this up. So here we are, we turned the power back on and our dimmer light actually works. And I'm not gonna lie, we are extremely excited to have dimmer lights in place. Um, also, I did wanna mention one other thing too. Um, if you didn't wanna go through the whole process of creating this, if you have a light fixture that actually uses the shade rings on the inside, you can easily convert that to a mason jar light fixture by getting a mason jar with the one piece lid and you can remove whatever shade they have on there and use the same process we showed you earlier with the shade rings in order to put a mason jar on top. Um, but if you do are looking to go this way, we really hope that this video was helpful for you guys and gave you a better idea of how to easily approach this. Now, if you do have any questions or comments, you can visit our post. And over there, too, we'll also have uh, a materials list that'll give you links to everything you need to make this happen. But uh, other than that, that about wraps it up. We're extremely excited to have dimmer switches on our back mason jar lights now. Uh, but anyway, again, thank you guys so much for swinging by today. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.